After three months of active game development learning, I participated in the second largest game jam of GMTK to make a game in 48 hours. So I made a game about the book collection that suddenly exploded, but well, it was a huge mistake. Welcome to the channel, my name is Atom Tima and this is how I made Control and Roll. The reason why I decided to join the GMTK was basically this. Hey, what's up, random stranger? Hey. Have you joined the JMTK? JMTK? <laughs> Boomer. Hey, not Danny. How are you? I am joined the JMTK. Oh no, you're possessed too. GMT no. GMT I said no. GMT okay, fine. I'll be joining JMTK. Just leave me alone, brain. Mark Brown. What kind of friend are you? Nonsense. You never liked me anyway. You wouldn't even come to my birthday party. Get out of my head. Leave my brain alone. <laughs> never. Never. <laughs> because of the difference in the time zones, for me, the theme of this year was announced at 12 a.m. Tell me about being lucky, uh-huh. The theme is out of control. Normal developers would start immediately brainstorming ideas, sharing the ideas between team members, programming, but not me. I was drawing the art for a birthday of my friend. But although I decided to start thinking of the game in the morning, I couldn't fall asleep for the next two hours. So in the process of brainstorming, I immediately knew that I don't want to use the literal interpretation of the theme by making some of the controls unavailable or having no control over my character. I wanted to find another meaning of being out of something and controls. So once again, I used the main tactic of the jam again. Brainstorming ideas to throw them away and not use later since the first ideas are usually garbage. I had the idea of anarchy and taking away power from something, being out of your mind and connecting the game with anxiety or mental health, facing enemies that spawn more and more until it becomes out of control, but I was satisfied with neither of them. If you watched the video of my previous jam, I said that I just had the idea for a name of my game, No Time to Shine, something like that. Ironically, this time the whole idea was born after coming up <clears throat> After coming up with the name as well, Control and Roll. I guess I have a fetish on the names that rhyme. But I still didn't know what I should make, and I fell asleep. Except suddenly at 2 a.m. How? Oh! Wake up, weirdo. I have a brilliant idea for you. <laughs> it's 2 a.m. Which idea? Out of control. This was it. I finally had the idea of how to interpret the theme. To use the control button to control the character and limit the number of clicking on control. And then I fell asleep again. I've already come up with the idea of for a control part and now it was the time for the roll. I didn't take... <clears throat> it didn't take too long and in the morning I decided to make a game about... the toilet roll? Indeed. It will look quite impressive in my future portfolio without a doubt. And so, approximately 10 hours later, I finally started doing something. In the last jam, I had the serious problems with measuring the distance and movements. So, for the sake of simplicity and learning something new, this time I chose the grid based movement. I made a quick layout of the level and the placeholder for a character. Basically, the character moves by following the invisible object that moves one step away every time the distance between them becomes almost zero. I increased the speed to make the game more dynamic, as well as implemented the change of direction. Initially, the character was moving until the control button was pressed, after which it stopped. And then the player needed to choose the next direction. But I thought that I don't want to stop the dynamic atmosphere of the game. So I replaced this with deleting the ability to stop. To give a proper visual feedback of what is going on, I made a child object for an invisible moving point. This object was showing the grayish shadow tiles in all four directions that the player can choose now, and the red arrow shows the direction that is currently selected. The main tactic for a game jam when you have no real skills in the game development 
is a cute design of a character. So I made a happy toilet roll in the Photoshop. The lack of arms and legs also made the animation easier, since I was just moving the line as if the character was rolling and squashing the character back and forth. Um, wait a sec. I made the rotation for a toilet roll and the tail that follows the roll as if the roll was losing the pieces of paper. Well, it was a quite huge number of spawning for a game, so I wasted another good chunk of time on the object pool to create all the necessary papers before the game starts and just reuse them later. Many hours later. Once I finished with that, I decided that touching your own tail will lead to losing the game. What a brilliant idea! Except it was the decision that I will regret about later. And I've also added the borders. The next step was to gradually decrease the remaining number of pieces of paper, which is shown... Um, where? Oh yeah. Which is shown in the left bottom part of the screen. I didn't really like that it was impossible to predict when will you run out of paper, so later I made it that this number decreases with each new grid cell, not after spawning the paper. Just to speed up the whole process a little, I temporarily added the most intense music that I could find as a placeholder for me. It was already the second day of the jam when I... Wait, 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 before going to the second day of making the game, let me remind you to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. It will hugely help our community to grow. Thanks. Back to the video. So, it was already the second day of the jam when I just started making the limitation for the number of turns, aka control clicks that player has. I also decided that collecting the poop will remove the tail. And about that. What is going on? Um, okay, fixed it. Somehow. I've also realized that it was unnecessary to allow the player to choose the opposite direction since it will be the instant death. So, I made choosing the opposite direction impossible. But it wasn't as simple as I thought it should be at all. The time was already out of control, so I opened Photoshop again to draw all the poops. As a result, I made four versions to make the game less repetitive. The happy poop, evil poop, uh, poops under drugs I guess, and Santa poop, the rarest poop to appear in the game. It's the middle of the summer, but why not? It's the game about the poop collection, what do you expect from me? And finally, I added the toilet papers that increased the number of remaining control clicks. It was a moment when the game was playable for the first time. So the goal is to survive as much as we can by choosing to go for the additional control clicks or additional paper. And don't you even dare to ask me in the comments why I decided to increase the paper by collecting poop and to increase the control clicks by collecting the paper. I have no literal idea. <sighs> To be honest, initially I wanted to make like 10 fixed puzzle levels with this mechanic, but oh boy, I looked at the time. Oh, oh no, midnight! <laughs> Must get back to desk. And so it became an infinite game. By the way, since I had no time for music, I took the melody from my previous game and quickly rearranged it with different tempo and instruments. Hey, it's not illegal after all. Immediate respawn of the character looked stupidly, and I knew that it lacked the visual feedback of why did the character respawn, so I decided to at least add the achievements that show player statistics and the best results so far. And also, instead of the proper tutorial level or even the proper UI, I just drew a picture in Photoshop and placed it before the game starts. I ask you to understand me, since I had less than 10 minutes left and I didn't even build the game. Seriously, the moment of looking at the slow upload of the game was so horrible, even my SATs were not as intense. At the end, I uploaded the game 5 minutes before the deadline, but I've spent another hour polishing the game page, making the cover image, the screenshots, etc, etc, etc. <sighs> It was exhausting, but I actually managed to finish the game in less than 48 hours. And to my surprise, many people actually liked the game, except for the fact that I... accidentally, unintentionally, and unironically recreated the snake game with a twist of running out of turns. Hey, but I have good news too. We were given a whole week 
to raid other games and unexpectedly my game received over 130 ratings from other people and a bunch of valuable comments. I have no idea how it happened, but I was so happy to answer every single comment and see what other people think of my game and what should I think in the next video. If you want to see your ideas and suggestions being implemented in the updated version of my game and show in the next video, click on the link in the description, play my game and leave your extremely important feedback in the comments. I will highly, highly appreciate any opinions from you. Once again, if you liked the video, click the like button and if you didn't, click the dislike, I guess? Subscribe to the channel and become a member of our friendly family community. Thank you for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next week. So long and thanks for all the fish.